Okay, so what? That's with uh, no termination, and that's should also be about the same. So now there's a filter in this. This thing being that it's designed to measure noise on a telephone circuit. So you take the low pass filter out and you put in what's called a C message filter and that's the frequency response of the standard telephone handset and that takes a lot of the deep hum out and leaves just the voice frequencies. So that allows us to turn the sensitivity up all the way. this up in the way that it was intended to be hooked up for reception, which is basically all the pairs in parallel against the ground. So we have our ground rod over there, which uh, we use the bushes uh, roots, this greasewood bush as they, they go down about 100 feet in the ground, so we're using that as the ground rod, and the ground rod itself is just a coupler in the bush. Otherwise you can't get any conductivity into this type of ground. Good. Okay, now we have all the outer pairs paralleled against ground, shown in the diagram here. where we're receiving right here, the voice frequency thing is not being used right now. It's down at the other pole. The noise level is pretty high from all the big giant power lines running through the desert here. But the air signals are coming in good in the background. The earth's very quiet right now, so, so we're down in the noise floor. Now if I terminate it, I can filter some of that hum out. So in this position, it's floating. There's no drain or load on the conductors to ground. And in this one, it puts a 600 ohm or a 900 ohm resistor in. It's uh, one or the other. It's a compromise resistor, but it's in that range. So that filters out some of the lower frequency interference. Contributes to the filtering of this. So what we can do now is go to the uh, radio frequency end of it. Now on. Yep. So this is the radio reception of the conductors against ground. As you can see, they're, they're here, the earth signals are roaring in but not in the audio frequency, this is in the radio frequency, so we're tuned to WWV right now and the noise of the earth signals is just about equal to the WWV signal. That's the Navy submarine broadcast station sending the crypto signals to the submerged nuclear submarines it's uh, one of the most powerful radio stations in existence at 2 million watts. So it, uh, it sends in a signal about 100 times stronger than the noise floor. But your signals are actually starting to overwhelm it today. So most of the noise you hear in the speaker is lightning right now. So there is a power line harmonic. I'm sure if you get into the power line interference. But 
right now the air signals are overwhelming the power line interference. And that's all the crap from the power companies that make it impossible to receive the low end of the voice frequency band without complications. Go up in frequency. Power line parasitics. This stuff will have to be studied later on in the spectrum analyzer the scope. This is kind of a manual spectrum analyzer. You can listen to each frequency. And these various radio stations. small power line wine. It's very difficult to say why this exists. You have to be studied. Power line harmonics are out of control. Okay, so now we'll go to the other mode, the loop, and see what it picks up. Chot, you got the clear. So now we're going to go back to looping all the conductors around and seeing what we can pick up electromagnetically. Prior we were picking up electrostatically, now we're going to go to the electromagnetic mode. Which should produce weaker signals, but let's see exactly what it produces. Well, it seems to receive her signals quite well. Navy is coming in much weaker. Power line, not the same. Barely picks up WWV. So the close spacing of the wires tends to keep it confined to local magnetic fields. It's not really a radio reception mode, it's more of a noise rejection mode. Other terminal. Throw it over. Here we are now at the pole pair dead end. This is the permanent dead end of this line. Uh, you can see the pole pair comes down the pole in conduit to this box here and Eric's going to give a demonstration. Pull pair at the other end we're grounded both conductors are tied together and grounded so we're going to connect our receiving transformer from this end to ground. Now the reason we got it ground at both ends we can see what the earth potential is so there's about 50 millivolts of potential being generated DC with the negative end here and the positive end of where we started. And let's see how much current it's capable of delivering. So that's 1.6, no that's 160 microamps of current is available from it. So now we'll measure, we'll try to measure. The resistance of this ground rod against the ground rods at the other terminal. So, aiding the earth current is 320 ohms, and opposing the earth current 
see now it's charging up the earth is charging up like a battery and that's about 180 ohms so now if we go back to the current again we find that we've altered the charge so to speak on the ground rods and the earth around them so this is what causes the guy anchors and ground rods to get eaten up is if you connect them together metallically there's a constant current flow and the material from the positive rod will flow to the negative rod and eventually consume it in its entirety as you saw with the guy anchors at the corner okay so now we'll try the audio off of this Okay, so now we're receiving out of the ground. You can see the hum is pretty bad. But the signals are coming through. So while it might, it might be pleasant to listen to, at least for detection purposes, the signal will rise above the power line noise and an event, seismic event, or some kind of electrogeological disturbance of significance will overwhelm the power line hum. comes in better underground than overground, which is being expected because they're trying to communicate with submarines. And WWV is still pretty weak. They're weak. They're not really trying to transmit underground. And then the, uh, you can see it, there's a lot of activity on Earth right now making all that noise. And we'll see how bad the power line crap is. Very loud. This is some kind of strange 15 kilocycle parasitic harmonic. Don't know exactly. It seems to be in the ground and not above the ground. So it's something that's following the major power corridors that flow through here which is not supposed to be there, but don't tell them, don't tell them that. We've got a, a null. power line blast. That's the fundamental 60 cycles. And then the harmonics. Then they neutralize each other right about here. that Morse code station. I feel like it's sending these different call letters. I've never heard this station before. Got the tone, it's kind of hard to cipher.
They used to come with voice broadcasts of the weather and all that, but the internet wiped out all those services. This is where most of the navigation beacons hang out. Used to be the aircraft had direction finding loops and before any uh, more modern navigation methods. This is how they found out which way they were going by homing in on radio stations and reading the compass it's attached to it. Okay, that's it. Okay, that wraps it up.